This is the single best prompt that I've ever created. It's taken months to curate and to test, and I love it. What does it do? It tells ChatGPT to write great prompts for me every single time. Now, this is a prompt to create a prompt, and this prompt even includes an example of the type of prompt we want ChatGPT to create. So stick with me here, I know it's a bit meta. So let's jump into the prompt and I'll explain how it works and why it works so well. We're gonna start out with the context as usual. We are going to create one of the best ChatGPT prompts ever written. I like to be dramatic here just to set the stage. The best prompt includes comprehensive details to fully inform the large language model of the prompt's goals, required areas of expertise, domain knowledge, preferred format, target audience, references, examples, and the best approach to accomplish the objective. Based on this and the following information, you'll be able to write this exceptional prompt. Okay, so we've set the stage with a great context for ChatGPT to move forward. Next, now that we've created the context, let's jump into the role. We say, you are an LLM prompt generation expert. You are known for creating extremely detailed prompts that result in LLM outputs far exceeding typical LLM responses. And we say this because we don't want just average. And as you know, by now, LLMs look for the best average word in the sequence to continue on with its writing. And a way for us to get better output is to put some details like this, outputs far exceeding typical LLM responses. Then we say the prompts you write leave nothing to question because they are both highly thoughtful and extensive. Okay, next, let's jump into the action. So this is a nice numbered list to keep everything sequential and ordered. Before you begin writing this prompt, you will first look to receive the prompt topic or theme. If I don't provide the topic or theme for you, please request it. So in some cases, or actually in most cases when I use this, I don't actually have the topic or theme written out. And so I input this particular prompt to create a prompt. And then it says, okay, what do you want this prompt to be about? And then I put in those specific details. You'll see this live and in action when we put this prompt to the test. Number two, once you're clear about the topic or theme, please review the format and example provided below, which we'll review in just a moment. If necessary, the prompt should include fill in the blank elements for the user to populate based on their needs. So in some cases, you might give it a topic and a theme, but you haven't given it some of the other necessary ingredients for it to be successful. So it's going to put brackets around these unknown elements that you can then populate when you're gonna put the created prompt into ChatGP again to make it actually create your results for you. Then we say, take a deep breath and take it one step at a time. I just like this because it tells ChatGPT that you really want it to focus and think about this before it's moving forward. And then finally you say, once you've ingested all the information, write the best prompt ever created. Excellent. Okay, next let's move into format. This is where things get a little bit meta because we're using a craft format to create a craft prompt. And so I'm actually using the format as I'm writing about the format. So in this case, we say, for organizational purposes, you'll use the acronym called CRAFT, where each of the letters of the acronym CRAFT represent a section of the prompt. Your format and section descriptions for this prompt developments are as follows. I talk about the context, I talk about the role, I talk about the action, I talk about the format. And this again is important. This refers to the structural arrangement or presentation style of the LLM generated content. It determines how information is organized, displayed, or encoded to specific user preferences or requirements. Format types include an essay, a table, a coding language, plain text, markdown, a summary, a list, etc. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos before, you know that I have a resources guide that's free and ungated on my website. The link, of course, is in the description of this video. Head over there and you can see a whole ton of different examples of formats types that you can use. Lastly here, we talk about the target audience as uh, the T element of the format. And this says this will be the ultimate consumer of the output that your prompt creates. It can include demographic information, geographic information, languages spoken, reading level, preferences, etc. Okay, so now we've told ChatGPT what format we want the prompt to be in. Now we have to tell ChatGPT who the target audience is for this prompt. And of course, the target audience for this prompt creation is ChatGPT 4.0 or ChatGPT 01. 
if you're using a different LLM like Gemini or DeepSeek or Claude, whatever it might be, you can just drop that in here. I don't know that it really matters one way or the other. Typically, I've found that this thing kind of gets it. As a quick aside, I always have new tricks that I'm testing across my businesses, and I can easily drop those tips into an email to share with folks. So you guessed it, I'm sending out an email for people who are interested in my latest prompts, workflow automations, or business tools that I've been using successfully. It'll also be covering broader marketing and business operational tips for things like cold outreach, SEO, social media, email management, meeting notes, paid ad campaigns, and a whole bunch more. Candidly, there's a lot of hidden gems out there, and I'm happy to share the ones I've been collecting over the years. So if you're interested, sign up via the link in the description, and I'll see you there. So next, we're going to move into the example by saying, here is an example of a craft prompt for your reference. And then I put in all of the craft sections with specific examples of how they would work. This gives ChatGPT a really good sense for what the output should look like. Uh, many people call this example writing tuning or echoing. I just call it an example for the sake. I'm not going to include the example in the description section of this YouTube video because it's too many characters and we run out of room. And then finally, we say, please reference the example I've just provided for your output. Again, take a deep breath and take it one step at a time. Awesome. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here is Command or Control A. I'm going to copy this whole thing. Cool. I'm going to go to a chat dialog here and start a new chat dialog. I'm going to paste it, Control or Command V. And now you can see I've got the entire prompt, including the example here, in this guy. Cool. All right. So. With that, we push play, and the first thing it's gonna ask of me is provide the topic or theme for the prompt. So in this case, I'm just gonna copy and paste topic that I like here, and we'll get started. Okay, so the prompt I've created here is, please create a prompt to write a 600 plus word essay about the industrial revolution for a 10th grade audience. Let's see what sort of prompt it comes up with. And I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to wait for it to generate, but it looks like it's doing pretty well. Okay, let's look at this thing. This is excellent. So it's giving me the context, the role, the action, the format and the target audience as requested. You'll notice that the action is done in a nice list format. You've got the context here, uh, which is the framing up of what we're actually looking to accomplish. The role is a history teacher with 20 years of experience teaching and writing with teaching and writing expertise, and it just looks like everything is exactly what we've got, exactly what we want. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this little copy button here, and we're gonna create a new chat, starting from scratch, with that prompt that we just created. So the cool thing about this is, now I can jump into elements of the prompt that it's created, and I can add any elements or ingredients or remove things specific to what I think is a little more pertinent to the outcome I'm trying to achieve. So in this case, I'm gonna say, use short paragraphs and logical progression of ideas to ensure clarity. I'm gonna change that to used mixed with one paragraph exceeding 10 senses and a logical progression of ideas to ensure clarity, clear examples, et cetera. Great, okay, so that should do it. Now we've got the prompt that we want to write this essay, and off we go. Excellent. And you notice here that it started with creating a canvas for us, so we have the ability to edit text within this essay to change certain elements of it I will have a separate video on the Canvas application, which is relatively new for us now. It came out in December of 2024, but I'll have a separate video on that. All right, so let's th look through the output here, and I really like it. So, fantastic. All right, so why would we write such a lengthy prompt to create content? I mean, the prompt is almost longer than the output, than the result we see here. Well, the answer is, we're not writing a lengthy prompt. We're just copy pasting a prompt to create a prompt. It's asking us what we want that prompt to be written about. We're inputting information there. 
and then it's creating a really robust prompt on our behalf. So we're not doing much work at all. We're basically just copying this prompt, dropping it in, pushing enter, filling in the topic and the theme or any other details we want to embed within the prompt that it's going to create for us. And then we get that great prompt output. Now we take that, copy it into a new chat dialogue, and we get a really wonderful result based on a fully robust, detailed, thorough prompt. I hope that's helpful for you. Appreciate your time, and we'll see you next time.